Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we'll be discussing about the third problem of today's weekly contest, count submatrices with equal frequency of x and y. The problem is very straightforward application of a 2D prefix sum that's uh, nothing but a very small extension of usual prefix sum you do on arrays. If you know about that, the problem is very easy. If you don't, you can watch this video and I can give you a couple of follow up problems as well that you can try to apply the same trick to understand it better. So with that, let's get started. The problem states that you are given a 2D character matrix grid where grid of i j is either x, y or dot. We have to return the number of sub matrices that contains grid of 0, 0 and equal frequency of x and y and it should contain at least one x right so let's take an example let's say this is the grid x y dot y dot dot so this is the grid so if you see this is one of the sub matrices which contain equal number of x and y and it contain at least one x and it also contains grid of zero zero similarly this is another sub matrix which contain equal number of x and y and again there is at least one x and zero zero is also included and finally this is another sub matrix which contain equal number of x and y with one x and grid zero zero so in total there are three sub matrices which satisfy the condition and hence the answer here is three right so hope the problem statement is clear now how to approach this so let's say you have this uh, particular grid now you want grid of zero zero to be always there right and you want a sub matrix so a sub matrix is nothing but something inside this and this sub matrix you can get by figuring out the top left and the bottom right cell so sub matrix is nothing but a rectangle right so if you can get the top left and the bottom right cell you can get the sub matrix now this sub matrix should be such that 0 0 is there now can you think of what like what should be the top left or bottom right what is the minimum top left and minimum bottom right for this condition to be true so the answer is the top left should always be 0 0 and bottom right can be anything why because if top left is not 0 0 0 0 will never be covered right because as as we discussed the top left determines the starting of the rectangle or the sub matrix so if you pick any other top left that will be the everything before that and above that will be something you are skipping right so with this criteria that 0 0 grid a grid of zero zero should be present we have fixed our top left cell for sure right now with this how many bottom right cell can be there so again there can bottom right cell can be anything which is whose row is greater than this and whose column is greater than this right so this particular cell is zero zero so we want any r which is greater than 0 any c which is greater than 0 which in turn means any of these cells will be a valid bottom right so even this is a valid bottom right in that case this is just the matrix we are looking for similarly this is another valid bottom right in this case this is a matrix you will be caring about and so on and so forth so overall top left is fixed 0 comma 0 bottom right can be anything in the matrix so over total number of matrix that can satisfy the first constraint is just n cross m where n is the number of rows and m is the number of columns right so among this n cross m we need to figure out how many of them have equal number of y and equal number of x and at least one x right so how to do that so we know that all of the matrices will be starting from zero zero 
so let's and it will be ending at some r comma c right so what we need is for every r comma c let's say this is r comma c for example so for this r comma c what we need number of x in this entire range number of y in this entire range and if we, can, if we can get this two count we can simply figure out whether they are equal and whether there is x, at least one x or not right so one of the way to approach this could be given a matrix just iterate over the entire matrix figure out the number of x and number of y and see if these two criteria are satisfied if they are this is a good matrix otherwise you move on right so if you take that approach the complexity would be you are counting the number of x and number of y for each sub matrix and a sub matrix can go up to order n cross m right so you are doing this many operation for every sub matrix and how many sub matrix are there we discussed that a while ago it is also n cross n so the complexity would be n square m square which surely will not pass because the value of n and m both is thousand right so we have to optimize this now what you can optimize either you skip iterating over all sub matrix or you make the calculation of number of x and number of y inside the sub matrix faster these are the border two approaches so if you try to skip iterating over all the matrix that's a harder problem to solve because in that case you are saying that you need to not iterate over everything but still find the good matrices which is a bit hard so instead of optimizing this we will try to optimize this first let's try to optimize that first because that's an easier problem to solve or might be an easier problem to solve if you are looking at it for the first time so we will try to figure out the number of x and number of y in a sub matrix efficiently and uh, how to do that let's solve the exact same problem on a 1d array first so let's assume that you have this array which has some ones right and you need to figure out how many ones are there in a particular sub array right so assume that you are solving the same problem on a single array how to solve this simple prefix sum right you can take the you can calculate one more array which is the prefix sum so prefix sum would look something like this 0 1 2 2 3 and 4 now if you if someone asks you that okay what is the sum of all the numbers here you just look at this particular prefix sum look at this prefix sum subtract these two value and you'll get the answer why because this prefix sum will contain everything starting from here and this prefix sum will contain everything starting from here so if you subtract these two you'll get whatever is the sum in this range so in this case 3 minus 0 which is 3 you can see there are 3 um, the sum of everything here is 3 indeed right so if we can solve the same on a 1d array let's we have like we can solve the same on a 2d array with slight modification so let's look at it let's assume that we are trying to figure out the number of x first so we don't care about y so you can see what i have done i have just uh, replaced x with ones and everything else i have kept empty which means they are zero now what i want is for any grid like this I want what is the sum of every element here and if we can figure out that efficiently we can get the number of x in this range in the same fashion we can get the number of y's as well by creating a different matrix and once we get x and y we can calculate whatever we need right now how to figure out the sum of everything here the we will try the exact same thing basically let's say you calculate the prefix sum right so of each row now once you calculate the prefix sum of each row what you have here is everything starting from here similarly what you have 
uh, here would be everything starting from this. What you have here will be everything starting from this, right? And so on and so forth. Now, when you want to find out what is the total sum of everything in this range, let's say, what you need to do now, instead of iterating over all of these, you can simply iterate over all of these and you'll get the answer, right? Because this contain everything starting from here. This contain everything starting from here. This contain everything starting from here. And this value here would contain everything starting from here. So if you want the sum of everything in this range, just sum these four numbers up and you will get the answer, right? So that's one way. So we have reduced our n cross m to n. Now we can reduce this further as well by saying that, okay, we will also take prefix sum in this direction as well. Like after we have taken the prefix sum above, we will take the prefix sum in the column direction as well. And that will give us what we want. How? So if you now take the prefix sum in column direction, what will be present here? This will contain the sum of this, this, and this. And what was this? This was the sum of everything here. And what was this? This was the sum of everything here. And what was this? This was the sum of everything here. So in total, what you get is sum of everything here and by looking at just this number, right? So with doing two prefix sum, one in the row wise direction and one in the column wise direction, you will at every cell R comma C, you will get what is the total sum in the range zero, zero to R comma C. And that's what you want. Right. So let's look at, let's look at an example that will make things a bit more clear. So let's assume that this is the array. Now what you want, you want every cell to tell you what is the prefix sum in the range zero zero to RC. So if you ask this cell, this cell to, should tell you what is the sum in this range, which in turn is six, right? There are six ones here. So how to do that? First, we will take the prefix sum in the row wise direction right um to ensure that if i want if someone ask me about one particular row i can give it directly if someone ask me about entire matrix i can sum up some of the things here to give the prefix sum so here if you see zero 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 one two two so that's the prefix sum here right similarly if you see here zero one one two, two, three, zero, one, one, two, two, three, and so on and so forth. So we take the prefix sum in the row wise direction. Now this two simply denotes what's the sum in this area, right? How? Because this basically the prefix sum of everything starting from zero, zero. So you can see in this area, the sum is indeed two. Now let's take the prefix sum in column wise direction, right? So how to do this? Uh, simply do prefix sum zero, 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 zero. This will remain zero, zero, one, one, zero. So zero, one, two, two, zero, one, two, two. Now, similarly, this one, zero, one, two, two, zero, one, plus two, three, plus two, five. And this is five as well. One, three, five, five and so on and so forth. Now, once you have taken the prefix sum in column direction, now this cell denotes what's the prefix sum, what's the sum in this entire matrix. Why? Because this cell is the sum of everything upwards, which is two plus two plus two, right? Now, what does two means? Two means everything up till here. What does these two mean? This two means everything up till here. And finally, this two also represent everything up till here. And this six basically is the sum of these three, which in turn means we have gotten the sum of everything here, which we wanted, right? So that's pretty much it. Uh, with this simple trick, we every cell here denotes what the prefix sum in a grid of zero, zero to R comma C. Now, once we have this matrix, 
we can simply compute what is the total count of x in a particular sub matrix starting at 0 0 to rc in just order one time and how like what is the time to compute this entire matrix it's simply order n cross m why because we are simply doing prefix sum twice once in the row wise and once in the column wise now in this by doing this order n cross m operation we can now figure out what is the total number of x in a sub matrix in just order one time similarly we can do the exact same operation for y as well and we'll get what is the number of y in a sub matrix in order one time as well with order n cross m operation basically you will start with the same thing instead of once for x you will put once for y and uh, go on with the same computation and you will get a different matrix for y now with just order n cross m operation you get these two matrices one for x and one for y and now once you iterate over all the matrix you don't need to uh, compute order n cross m operation to figure out the number of x and number of y that is just order one time now so this is order one and overall complexity of figuring out whether the matrix is good or bad is simply order n cross m as well so the complexity is n cross m plus n cross m plus n cross m which is n cross m only so overall complexity is just order n cross m right so hope this entire thing is clear uh, if something is not clear uh, try to rewind and watch the section and i'm very sure you will be able to get it next we're looking at the code but before looking at the code i would strongly encourage you to pause and try to code this entire thing by yourself because that's not very difficult at all you just need to apply the prefix sum in two direction right so the code is exactly what we discussed we will figure out the number of x and number of y in the 2d fashion and once we have number of x and number of y every cell here would denote what is the total number of x in the range 0 0 2 r comma c every y here would denote what is the total number of y in the range 0 0 2 r comma c now we will iterate over all the r comma c which is the ending of a matrix we'll see number of x and number of y are equal and if number of x is greater than zero we get a valid matrix and we will simply increment the result now coming to count 2d sum this is also straightforward uh, we take a character first we create a grid which is either one or zero if the character matches that's one otherwise it is zero now we do prefix sum in row wise and then prefix sum in column wise and simply return the result right so hope this entire thing is clear uh, if you have done this for the first time uh, then i would encourage you to solve a few more problems there is one more problem uh, of weekly three to eight you can uh, this is a very good problem to understand this entire prefix sum approach so i would encourage you to try out this problem by yourself before looking at the video again if you don't understand the problem after looking at the video uh, try to look at the video in parts and see if you can follow through or apply the, the concept that you have learned in this video by yourself in subsequent parts so with that we'll end the video here if you find this interesting feel free to share with your friends and i will see you in the next one thank you